Today, our guest is Dr. Dolly Berthelot, the author of the book, Perfectly Square. Now, Dolly, when I was growing up, uh, telling somebody they were a square wasn't terribly polite. Uh, so what's going on with these perfect squares? Well, when I was growing up, it also had the same connotation. And to some extent, there's an aspect of that suggested, but I'll get back to that later. The main point is that this is a world that is made up of squares. All the characters in the book, at the beginning, they're all perfectly square. And I will show you the book. Uh, it's a very small one, but hopefully with a lot of, uh, a lot of meat in a small space and a lot of fun in a small space. And I'm going to read just the opening of it um, to kind of give you an idea of the spirit. It is a fantasy fable for all ages, and that's important to remember as I read it. It's been enjoyed and used by everybody from school children through university, through the university professors and staff, um, medical people, managers, etc., business managers, um, and churches. Once upon a time, a world was square, really. Everything in it, including all living creatures, was square, perfectly square. In fact, everything was made up of two-inch squares that multiplied by two, of course, to reproduce, methodically. They joined together to form larger objects, even older square creatures, all easily divisible by two. Birthdays meant add a year and add a square. Naturally, everything fit together. Everyone knew just what to expect, and they did expect just that. Absolute, measurable, predictable perfection which everyone recognized, of course, and agreed upon without question. Squareland had no conflict. Well, it was a very peaceful world, Squareland, but it was also a very limited world. And after a time in the book, something happens. I won't say what. Um, children actually spur it on. When all of a sudden, new shapes are made. And of course, square land is in complete upheaval. There's conflict, there's tension, um, and lots and lots of questions, because how do you deal with people who are so very unlike you and so very unlike everything you've ever known or accepted about your world? One of the things I do in the book is attribute personality qualities to the shapes. I found, as I developed this, that the personality traits were inherent in the shapes. The shapes are basic shapes that are pan-cultural, meaning that these geometric shapes are cross-cultural, they're across the world, the same shapes, um, and therefore there's something very basic about that. It's not limited by language, it's not limited by um, what you're used to, a square, a triangle, a circle, these exist in every land among every people. And the more you think about, dwell on, and play with, which is what I do in workshops a lot with these shapes, the more you play with them in your mind, if not otherwise, the more you see the attributes seem natural. As I read, you might also think about people you know. The triangle, and I'm going to show you here the picture of both the triangle and the circle. I hope you can see that pretty clearly. Triangle. Being remarkably sharp, triangles could be dangerous. They were also on the cutting edge, making interesting new shapes. Triangles became innovators. Mavericks, surprising assets in this rapidly changing world. Triangles could pierce false assumptions, cut red tape, and point the world like no one else. In contrast, circles were philosophical, conjuring abstract ideals of 
all-embracing, never-ending love, interconnectedness, and pie. True, they were not understood by many, but criticism rolled easily off their backs.